Hey, what's going on, you guys? It's Major Dragon here. And real quick for the video starts, I want to let you guys know about some big news. As you guys might have seen from the short or the Discord, I have now released new merchandise on my brand new store. It's a big achievement that I'm really proud of. So if you guys want to go check it out down below, it's really awesome. Make sure to click the link in the description down below to go check out the store, maybe buy some merchandise, and also be prepared for December, as I'm also planning on releasing some Christmas merch, which will be limited edition. But we'll talk more about that later on when we get closer to it. And thank you all so much for the support. I really do appreciate it. So let's get into the video. Make sure to check out my Patreon for exclusive videos never before seen on YouTube. And don't forget to also check out the memberships on my channel page to join and gain access to perks and see videos early. Make sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell and be notified of new videos. All the support goes to the production of the channel for better content. Now let's get into the video. What is going on you guys, Major Dragon here, and real quick for the video starts, I want to thank you guys so much for 15,000 subscribers. I'm glad we were able to break this before the end of the year. It really means a lot to me, you guys are the best, so I hope you guys enjoy this new series. In this what if, we will go over, what if Goku was a Saiyan God? Now I have done stuff similar to this, if what if he was uh, Yamoshi's descendant, or what if he was born in Super Saiyan God? But he's a Saiyan God. Now what I mean by this is Son Goku was born as a full God. Imagine the likes of Yamoshi being a Super Saiyan God being born. Now Son Goku here is not a Super Saiyan God in his child state. He is in his normal base form. But he does possess God Ki automatically from the start. And he has incredible potential. He's similar to the likes of Goku Black who's a divine being in a Saiyan body. But Goku here is a full god. He is not a half mortal, he's a full god. This will greatly change a lot of the Dragon Ball story, as Goku is greatly different here. So anyway, let's get into what would happen if Goku was born a Saiyan god. Most of the events for the start would happen the exact same with Bardock, still sacrificing his life to fight Frieza, but the Saiyan race was completely obliterated. Son Goku would have still been sent off, as Bardock and Jinae would have either way in the new retconned, they would have sent him off on the ship and sent him to Earth. In the original version, they would have still scanned his power level, but it would have shown up zero, so they still would have sent him to Earth either way. Goku would have still met Grandpa Gohan, and Goku still would have hit his head the same as before, becoming the carefree and happy child that he was. Sadly, as the years would pass, he would transform into a great ape and kill Grandpa Gohan, then he would meet Bulma. This version of Goku is a lot more powerful than his original self. As you guys remember, he has God Ki naturally. So this natural God Ki boosts his power even more. So instead of having a power level of 10, like the original, he has a power level of over 100. He would have easily defeated Yamcha alongside with the Pilaf gang, the same as before. And most of the events for Dragon Ball would have gone similarly with them still going through training with Master Roshi, to then Goku, of course, fighting the tournament against Tien and then Roshi. He would have still met Demon King Piccolo, the same as before, as he would have still been released. But we're going to back up to especially when Goku would lose against Demon King Piccolo. Now hold on, hear me out. Goku, at this point, at the start of Dragon Ball, would have had a power level 100. By the time he would have fought Demon King Piccolo, this version of Goku would have probably been the similar power level of around 260. But he was still gravely injured, but he cannot control his power very well, as he's still struggling to harness the power of his god energy. But Son Goku, after defeating Demon King Piccolo, he would have beaten him to the inch of his life, as Demon King Piccolo would have still spawned Piccolo Jr., and he would have passed away from his wounds. Goku was still injured as before, he would have done training with Korin and Kami afterwards, as Kami was interested in Goku, as he can sense that the young boy has divine energy. He can feel it. Goku would still continue his training with Korn, the same as before, and he would drink the Ultra Divine Water. He would still train under Popo and Kami, and Kami would start to figure out Goku's divine powers and figure out that this is not a mortal boy. That this young man possesses God Ki. He would still send Goku, the same as before, over, and Goku trained the Hype Ball Time Chamber for about a month before he couldn't handle it. But now Kami's running out of options here, as he trained Goku the best that he could. He does know of beings in the other world who could help, but he thinks this boy's not ready yet. 
So as the three to four years would pass, some Goku would still meet his best friends the same as before at the new tournament. This is the legendary Piccolo Jr. arc where Goku, of course, looks about the exact same. He would have still met Chi Chi the same as before, and they still would have met and gotten together, but we'll talk about this later. Goku here has gotten far more powerful than his original self, clarifying that this version of Goku has been trained by Kami and Korin for over three years, his potential is much higher than his original self. So Goku in the original had a power level of around 316 to 330 when he fought Piccolo Jr. This version of Goku has a power level of over 2000. He's far more powerful than his original self, so when he would fight Tien, and of course Chi Chi was a one shot either way, he would have easily defeated Tien not even needing to take off weighted clothing. The same thing goes for Piccolo Jr. Piccolo Jr. would not have a chance against this version of Goku, as this version of Goku was just far too powerful. Goku would still spare his life, because he knows that if Piccolo dies, Kami would die, which would destroy the Dragon Balls. Piccolo would still swear revenge, and now he's a rival. As Piccolo would then fly off, Goku was not as gravely wounded as he was in the original, so this version of Goku would have still met up with Chi Chi, and I do feel like they probably would have still gotten together. They would have still had Gohan, and five years would pass. Goku would still continue to train, but as we know, he has kind of slacked off a little bit, as he even stated. Raditz would have still shown up as he knows that there's a Saiyan brother that he has, and he can help, of course, join the team. He would still arrive on Earth, same as before, or the, or the shotgun farmer would then kill him, but that's a different what-if scenario, and the shotgun farmer is too overpowered. Raditz would still find Goku at Master Roshi's house. Now, at the Kami house, this is where some changes are going to very quickly occur, as when Raditz tries to attack Goku, Goku here is far too powerful and too fast for Raditz. As it has been five years, Goku has still done basic training, so Goku here has a power level of around 4,000. He's gotten twice as powerful. He would have easily overpowered Raditz, having no chance against him. Raditz wouldn't even try to take Gohan, as he didn't injure Goku like before and try to ransom him. With Raditz not having much of a chance, Raditz cannot form a fake moon from what we know. So Raditz cannot transform into a great ape. So Raditz would have to accept his loss as there's nothing else that he can do against Goku and he would beg for his life. Goku would still spare Raditz and Raditz would then tell him about the other Saiyans that are coming. Now Vegeta and Nappa, would they be interested? I don't truly think so as they don't really care for Raditz even if he lost. That's not their problem. But I do feel all the way up until when Raditz tries scanning Goku's power level, it wouldn't show up, but Vegeta and Nappa would probably think, uh, just the scouter is broken because they just fought, that's why. And they would probably forget about it. They are a little bit interested, but they have more missions to do under Frieza's lordship. So for the time being, for about a year, they would train normally. As Raditz doesn't know if they're going to be showing up or not, but he still has a scouter as he would have given it to Bulma, who was able to break it down and learn about the communications between them and etc. etc. With Goku here training with him alongside Raditz, Raditz will start to warm up a little bit and he will start to like Earth and accept it as his new home, as this is something that he can actually enjoy. Goku training with somebody who's actually very powerful has greatly increased his potential even more, making him far more powerful. Alongside with Raditz, who I do believe has good potential as well, if given the chance, with also training alongside a stronger being, he would be able to kind of keep up with Goku a little bit, but Goku would start to easily surpass him because of his god energy. Raditz would find his brother weird, since this version of Goku, he, they can't stand his power level, but he's so strong. His scouter has to be broken, as there's no way. And even, this version of Goku, even from a younger age, can also fly. As remember, he's given divine energy, and Goku here is actually starting to learn how to use this divine energy even more over time. This version of Goku could potentially start being able to make key weapons of his own down in the future. All of this would change when they were talking alongside with Bulma and the others, and they would bring up the Dragon Balls, how we can grant a wish, as Raditz would ask what that was, unbeknownst to them. Vegeta and Nappa would be listening to their intercoms, and they would hear about this, and this would spike their interest. They would still fly right towards Earth like the original, but it would pretty much be a year late. Raditz and Bulma would then hear about the Saiyans coming to Earth within a year's time. 
has. Raditz even states that even with our current power, I can compare myself to you, we don't have a chance. Raditz by this point has a power level of around 3,000. Goku here has a power level of around 10,000. So Raditz knows that not even Goku could probably defeat this version of Vegeta and Nappa. Goku wouldn't really know what to do, maybe he can go in that room again, but Kami has been saving something. Kami tells him that there is a legendary teacher in the other world who can help them. Maybe King Yama might know who it is, so they would go to the other world and meet up with King Yama the same as before, and Raditz and Goku would then learn about King Kai, who can train them to make them stronger than ever and to fight back the Saiyans. Goku and Raditz would then take the task, as they would then fly all the way over to King Kai's planet. Now as we know, Goku struggled to reach King Kai's planet on foot, as he only had about three months of training left to train under King Kai. But since they're flying, and they are much more stronger than their original selves, they would be able to reach King Kai much quicker, possibly within a month or two's time. So they would have around 10 months to train. They would arrive, and they would train under King Kai. King Kai was adamant to train Raditz because of Raditz's dark history and his tainted soul. But some Goku was pure. But King Kai, upon meeting the two Saiyans, would instantly take a liking to Goku, as he can sense that Goku has God energy. It feels very similar to even his, Lord Beerus's, and the others, but he keeps that quiet, as he would train them in his own way, as they're both very different. He would still teach Raditz the Kaioken, but Raditz cannot learn the spirit bomb as Raditz is too impure in King Kai's eyes. Raditz would continue his strength and hard training, King Kai has a different route for Goku. Goku, with his higher potential, was easily able to learn Kaioken and the Spirit Bomb very quickly. And, with the use of his Divine Body, Goku here has God Key similar to King Kai, so he can actually hold Kaioken a little bit easier than his normal self would. So this version of Goku can stack it up to potentially 4-5 to five times without having to severely damage himself. But King Kai would go a different route with Goku as he would meditate with him and help him learn his Divine Energy. As he would explain to Goku what God Key is compared to Normal Key and what he has, and what he could potentially be able to do with this power. Goku takes note of it as they would continue to train, as King Kai notes that his God energy is kept to his potential, and it's very hidden within him. Goku would meditate and train to learn to master his God Key to King Kai's level. Some Goku here has gotten enormously stronger by the end when the Saiyans would finally arrive. As once when Vegeta and Nappa would arrive, None of the Z Fighters would truly die because they did not send out the Cybermen and Nappa never had fun time attacking everybody as Goku and Raditz arrived on time and both of them were ready to take on the Saiyans. What is going on you guys? Major Dragon here and real quick before the video starts, I want to thank you guys so much for 15,000 subscribers. I'm glad we were able to break this before the end of the year. It really means a lot to me, you guys are the best. So I hope you guys enjoy this new series. What is going on, you guys? Major Dragon here, and today is a very special time for me to tell you guys something very important. Two things. Today, as you guys have noticed by the length of the video, I decided to give you guys a little Christmas present. I decided to make a super long what if. This time, it'll be roughly 30 to 40 minutes from the time I'm recording this video. Because of this, this is going to be one part only. So, one other thing is I'm thinking about changing my upload schedule. As you guys know, I always post at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but I believe that most of you guys are at school during that time or at work, respectively. So, I'm deciding to think about changing it to 3 p.m. So, by the time you get home from work or you're home from school, you can watch the videos. Because of this, I will be posting a poll on my community page. By the time this video will be up, you will see it. Go vote on that and tell me, is that what you guys want? Instead of 10 a.m., it's 3 p.m. So you guys can see it when you get home from work or from school. Let me know down below. I hope you guys enjoy this super long video. It took me ages to do this, but you guys deserve it. It's a little Christmas present for me to you. Also, be on the lookout for new merchandise that are coming out. Anyway, I hope you all enjoy the video. Our story last ended with Son Goku defeating the likes of Raditz, and Vegeta and Nappa are soon on their way. But they did arrive a year late. Now the same events as before, Raditz would start to really adjust to the planet Earth, as remember he's been there for over a year or so. After the training with King Kai, this would greatly change Son Goku's prowess. Remember, Goku here knows he has Gaki, as he does have it within him, but he never utilized the power, truly. 
until he met King Kai, who very quickly noticed that he's not normal. As we know with Gagi in the show, it is pure energy, not tainted by mortal affairs, as this Gagi even has healing properties and more. King Kai would do his very best to help Son Goku learn this, even utilizing the help of other Kais. So Goku's training was completely different from Raditz, as Goku, with his way higher potential, was very quickly able to catch on to King Kai's training, he already learned Kaioken, and he learned the Spirit Bomb very quickly. Raditz would stay at King Kai to train and grow stronger than ever, so he would utilize King Kai's full training. Goku here would have actually left to the other world, as I feel like King Yemma would allow him access to go there, even though he's not dead, Goku would go there and train with the other Kais, even the Grand Kai, learning to harness his power. There, he would even meet the likes of Pycon, and they would have an intense battle, but sadly Goku would lose against this version of Pycon, as Pycon, though is a little bit weaker, is still around the same strength as Super Saiyan Goku was when he fought Cell, which is hundreds and hundreds of times stronger than this current Goku, or thousands. Goku would lose, but his potential during that fight would grow his power massively. Over a year would pass during his training, once when Vegeta and Nappa arrive, this is where things are going to take a massive turn. As Goku and Raditz would arrive on time, the same as before, they would not have the Z Fighters be KO'd by the Cybermen or Nappa, so they would not have a reason to use the Dragon Balls to go to Namek since Piccolo never died. Now during this time as well with Gohan, Gohan actually has more time to train with Piccolo. As once when they learn about the Saiyans, they have a year to almost two years to train, which is way more time than the original. This is a bit more heartbroken for Chi Chi as Gohan was dawn longer, but I feel like after a year or so Piccolo would let him go home for a little bit. But Gohan is way more mature here, having almost two years of training and surviving on his own. He is a little bit more like his father, as he has more of an acceptance to training. Let me explain. Gohan here only trained at a necessity, and he was kind of thrown into it, and he knew that as a young child, that he had no choice because the Earth was doomed. But Gohan here was surviving on his own for two more years, that gives him more time to enjoy training, and to kind of enjoy his Saiyan heritage. This also gives him a stronger relationship with Piccolo, as they have had more time to be together, so him and Piccolo are way closer friends, and Piccolo does regard him as one. This version of Piccolo is also a lot more powerful, even with Gohan's potential, Gohan is able to actually keep up and fight with Piccolo pretty evenly, giving Piccolo a really good training partner. Gohan here has mastered most of Piccolo's techniques. Gohan here has even mastered the special Beam Cannon, which of course is a very high level technique, but he is his father's son, so... He was very quickly able to learn this. Gohan would have still turned into a great ape during the year's time of training in the beginning, but he would have lost his tail. Gohan would have had a small little camp, and Gohan would have been running around the forest, helping out friends and helping out people in need. He would also meet the small forces of the Red Ribbon Army, but they're very small factions of them, and Gohan would very quickly take them out. He would also help around with villages and help around, as Gohan would travel far around the planet. He would actually meet Aider alongside with the other humans as well, as Android 8 is an android from the Red Ribbon Army that of course Goku helped out in the beginning. Gohan would help them out and help people out that are in need. Gohan here would also continue meeting people and fighting new adversaries, and growing more powerful and more stronger. This version of Gohan is also not as whiny as his original self, training with Piccolo for longer, Gohan's more of a warrior now than before, so he's not as easily terrified of certain things as he was as a young child. This version of Gohan's a bit more mature and way more powerful. Now if we were to go over power levels for each character, that can definitely go up into the air for you. As we know, each version of the Dragon Ball character greatly increases their strength, especially with the likes of training. Now from what we do know, Gohan, not saying exact numbers, during the Saiyan Saga had a power level of around 1,000 to 2,000, roughly. Part of the fact that he trained for a year longer, and he's training even harder than before, Gohan has gotten a lot more powerful, alongside with Piccolo. Gohan and Piccolo both have a power level of over 10,000, even and out to 10 to 12,000 for both of them. This also gives the humans more time to train, so for Krillin, Tien, and Yamcha, and Chaozu, they would have plenty more time to train under Kami. Now because of this, their power would rise as well, 
as their power, not as high as Gohan and Piccolo because they're pushing each other, their power level will go from the 1 to 2,000 range. It would spike up to maybe 4 to 6,000. So maybe Tien and Krillin are near power levels of 6,000. And they've learned to master their techniques even more. Once when Vegeta and Nappa would arrive, Goku and Raditz would arrive a few minutes later. As remember, they had to get from King Kai's world all the way back to King Yama, but they would get there much quicker. This is where the biggest change of Dragon Ball is going to occur for everybody. As this version of Goku, he had a power level of 8,000 in the original when he fought Vegeta and Nappa. This version of Goku, even before leaving to the other world, had a power level of a few thousand. Not to mention the fact that he was able to harness his god energy has given him a ginormous boost in power for his base form only. And we will talk about Raditz very shortly. Son Goku here has gone from power level of around a few thousand. Let's say by the time that he finished King Kai's training, he had a power level of around 12,000. Because King Kai's training helped him a lot, but it didn't boost his god energy. So having a power level of 12,000, Goku could have gotten hundreds and hundreds of times stronger because of the god energy boost his potential far more than anything else. And he's getting Zenkai's fighting very powerful beings such as Pycon. This version of Goku here, fighting alongside, has gotten 200 times stronger, which of course would give him a massive power level of around 2.5 million. I know, I know, but this is base Goku here. Goku is on the verge of unlocking his god energy and he's starting to learn to harness it. This is base form version of Goku. Now this version of Goku does not have the likes of Super Saiyan God, of course, but he's able to access his God Essence power. If you guys don't know what that is, Son Goku used it against Frieza when they fought in the Resurrection F movie. It was a white aura to where he harnessed the power of his God form. So for this version of Goku, with his God Essence form, we don't have an official multiplier for the form. But you could argue that wouldn't it necessarily be a massive boost in power? Is it technically the same multiplier as Super Saiyan God? You can argue that yes and no. I'm going to say it's probably half the power of God. Of a Super Saiyan God, of course. Now, we don't know the official multiplier for a Super Saiyan God. It's never been confirmed. Some say it's a thousand. Some say it's a hundred thousand, a million, a hundred million. But it's completely up for debate. I'm going to say for Super Saiyan God is a 10,000 times multiplier, which is severely lowballing the form I know attacking the comments. But half of that is 5,000. So Son Goku having a power level of 2.4 million, using that times 2.4 million times 5,000 would give him a power level of around 12 billion. This would make Goku's form far more powerful than the likes of Cell, and possibly Super Saiyan 2 Gohan as well, already in the Saiyan Saga. As we know, the power levels are iffy past the Frieza arc, but we have people who have detailed accounts of written of what the power levels would be, and Cell and Gohan would be a few billion, Majin Buu potentially being 30 billion to etc. So Goku is around half the strength of Majin Buu, which is completely insane. So, this is his base form with some God Essence, not his true Super Saiyan God form. Goku, by this point, is far stronger than Vegeta and Nappa. Goku does not interfere with the battle, as Raditz says that he wants to do this. Now, with King Kai's training, we know that Goku got 18.8 .8 times stronger with King Kai's training. So, if Raditz trained, that was only for three months, as we know, for only for three months. So you could do the multipliers and break down how much it would actually be. So once when Raditz trains there for over a year, this would basically mean that he gets 75 times stronger. Now, he technically trained there for two years straight, but you can take a few months off, but let's just say that it equals out. So if Raditz will travel around King Kai's world and train for over two years, and remember, King Kai can also add weights to increase her training as he did this with Goku. This would mean that Raditz got 150 times stronger. So, adding that to his power level of 1,500, he would have a power level of 225,600, which is absolutely ridiculous. But 
it's possible, as the numbers have shown, and with Raditz's potential being Goku's family and his brother, I think that Raditz would have similar potential to Goku. Raditz does not have God Key, remember this, but Goku's a lot more powerful. So, with that said, Raditz having a power level of 225,000, he would have easily defeated Vegeta and Nappa. Even alleviating his boredom, he would let them transform into a great ape, of course, with Vegeta using the fake moon. Raditz has kept his tail, but he just won't look up at the moon, and he would still easily defeat them to prove his point, that they're not stronger than him. The fight would be very intense, as Vegeta would instantly tap a scouter, reading a power level of around 10,000 looking at Raditz. Vegeta would then laugh and say that this is, ah, uh, it's pretty impressive, but it's not stronger than him. But he was definitely shocked, though, alongside Nappa. Nappa would think it's a joke as he would fly in to attack Raditz, but Raditz would waste no time and instantly kick Nappa into a pile of rocks, knocking the rock tower on top of him. Nappa would then get up with his armor damaged and bleeding already. He was furious that this is impossible. He would then charge up a massive attack from his mouth and fire right at Raditz, who would then just glance over at Nappa and smack it away with a finger. Nappa was utterly shocked by this, he would fly in delivering combos to Raditz, but Raditz wouldn't even dodge or move, as he would take the attack smirking at Nappa. He would then grab his hand, and then gut punch Nappa right into the air, and fire a massive key attack, killing Nappa. Completely obliterating him. Vegeta was utterly shocked to see how easily Nappa was defeated, but his power level was 12,000. He's still stronger than that. He could definitely take on Raditz. Goku would not interfere, as Raditz told him before that when the Saiyans arrive, it is his fight only, and Goku would respect this as it is his brother's wish. The Z Fighters would then watch in awe, as Vegeta running out of options would actually plant Cybermen, and Raditz knows this, but Raditz is not concerned, maybe can alleviate some boredom. Even with the Cybermen planted, Vegeta to kind of dodge Raditz or maybe kind of distract people, the Cybermen would get easily killed, either by Raditz, or by Gohan or Piccolo. Cybermen would have no chance. And then, Vegeta would then fly in attacking Raditz full force, as Raditz would easily dodge his attacks. Vegeta's scouter would continue to rise as Raditz was showing more of his power. As it would reach past 30,000, it would then explode. Vegeta was furious. There was no way this low-class Saiyan was able to be more powerful than him. There's no way. Vegeta would then continue to attack Raditz, giving everything that he had, but Raditz would just smirk, dodging every single attack and easily tanking them as well, mocking Vegeta, telling him that with hard work and training, anybody can become stronger than you. You're not a prince. This would damage his pride, as Vegeta would then jump into the air and charge up a full-powered Gallic gun. With this charge up happening, he would then fire it right towards Raditz, which Raditz would then smack away with ease. Vegeta was utterly shocked. How is this possible? There's no way that he deflected his Gallic gun like that. Vegeta would not give up as he would continue to attack. Raditz would then gut punch him, destroying most of his armor and knocking Vegeta to the floor. As Vegeta had almost a hole in his stomach as he was starting to die. Goku can just feel something with Vegeta, as they've already killed somebody, Nappa. Why are they going to kill him? There's been enough killing today, and there's no need to kill him. As Goku would then stop Raditz, saying no, let him go. Raditz would be adamant about it, but Goku says if he tries anything, you can stop him anyway. We both can. Raditz would then understand what his brother's wishes, and he understands. He can't fight Goku for it anyway. Vegeta would then wake up in the hospital. Location, Capsule Corp, where Bulma was keeping a really good eye on him, making sure he doesn't escape. Vegeta here has special locks on him to make sure he doesn't kind of break out and go crazy. As this was technology that Bulma made to basically hold down Vegeta if he ever tries to go crazy and kill people. And it worked out really well, as it's powered by energy, and he's far too weak right now to even fight against the cuffs anyway to hold him down. It would be a very odd relationship, as Vegeta would deny anything that Bulma does to him or anything like that, and Bulma sees him as a rude asshole. But over time, she would start to like Vegeta, as he's kind of a bad boy, but she would start to fall in love with him. As Vegeta would fully recover by this point from the massive damage that he sustained, 
he's a lot more powerful. This version of Vegeta, you can lowball and say that he got around two times stronger, so given a power level of 18,000 times two would be around 36,000. So being around 36,000, he is already as strong as his name itself. Now, what about Frieza? If you guys remember, the transmission was brought out for the Dragon Balls. This means that Frieza knows, and Frieza's already at Namek as we speak. There's one issue, though. This version of Frieza has collected all the Dragon Balls with the help of his men. Nail would sadly pass away, and even the likes of Dende would sadly pass away. But the difference here is Frieza did not know that you needed the language to speak for the Dragon Balls. He never knew. Because of this, Elder Guru's heart would be broken. The only reason why Elder Guru held on so close to his passing was because he wanted the Z Fighters to fight back against Frieza. That's the reason why he held on. But since there is nobody fighting, there's nobody helping his people, Elder Guru would pass away. Right when Frieza was going to make a wish, before he could even try summoning the dragon, he would then fly over to Elder Guru and command that he would tell him the secret code to use the Dragon Balls. Elder Guru would then tell Frieza about what he did to his people, and Elder Guru would then disappear, passing away. His men would then shout at Frieza as Frieza would then turn around and see that the Dragon Balls have turned fully into stone. Frieza's anger could not be contained. He would let out a scream as his aura would shake all the planet Namek, and he would instantly shoot a death beam, killing a few of his men in anger. His tail would then slap the ground, making a large crater, as he would then look at his men and tell them, we need to find more of these wishing orbs. They stated on planet Earth that there was wishing orbs too. Let's go to planet Earth, and let's find these wishing orbs, as I will have my immortality. Breeze would then get into his ship, with seething anger, and they would then go on their way to Earth. Now, as we know, this will take a few weeks to arrive, as Frieza's ship is a lot bigger, and I would assume is a bit slower, so it would take him a few more weeks' time for him to even arrive. Now, remembering here, Raditz still gave Bulma his scouter the same as before, all the time ago. Bulma has it to see communications within the universe, as she's grateful for it, alongside with the other space pods as well. Bulma is able to go up in outer space now and see intergalactic things. Bulma would then hear across the intercoms of these men in the Frieza Empire planning on heading right to Earth. Vegeta, who was training in the version of the Gravity Room, as remember, Bulma got the idea from, of course, the King Kai training, and she would add it on, so Vegeta's training in that. Vegeta would be terrified that Frieza's on his way to Earth. By this point, Kakarot... Goku was alongside with Raditz, and they're at Chi-Chi's home. Raditz has actually gotten really close to a woman named Launch, and they've actually started liking each other and talking recently. So Raditz actually has his own home nearby, as he's actually staying in his old grandfather's house, Grandpa Gohan's home, for the time being, as he wants to build his own home and live near his brother. Now, Gohan actually has a good relationship with Raditz, as it's his big uncle, and Piccolo is kind of adamant about Raditz, but he respects him as a warrior. Gohan here, back to seeing his father. Gohan was enjoying his time and having a great life. Chi-Chi was happier than ever, having both Goku and his scary older brother, too. But Raditz seems like a nice man, and Launch seems happy, so why are they going to be mad about that? Goku would continue training as his per-usual self, mostly getting into farming now, too, as that's what Chi-Chi wants him to get a job. But knowing Goku's educational issues, farming might be the best option, which Raditz might even try doing his own hand in. Well, Raditz kind of adamant about it, but Goku says it's fun to do. Raditz just prefers training himself, though. He's a bit of a Saiyan warrior. Gohan would still continue to study, as Chi-Chi was very adamant about it, saying that he needs to catch up. So Gohan did not do too much training during this time. His power level would stay roughly about the same, at around 10 to 12,000, because he would not get rusty like before. He would do slight workouts with his father, as Chi-Chi would allow that, of course. Now... This is when Vegeta would then fly full force, landing right at Goku's house. Goku and Raditz would have gone outside to see what Vegeta wants, as Vegeta was desperate, and he would tell them about Lord Frieza. 
This would make Raditz's blood go cold, as Raditz knows how terrifying Lord Frieza is, and Vegeta would then explain to them what Frieza is, who he is, mainly to Goku, and that he's heading right towards Earth, and he'll be here within a few weeks' time. And they need to do something about it, or else, if Frieza shows up, he'll kill everybody, and if he gets the Dragon Balls, he'll get his wish to become immortal. Goku was surprised by this Frieza guy, but he sounds really, really strong. He might as well fight him. Vegeta would then yell at him that that's not the point. The point is, is that Frieza's on his way here, you fool. They would then begin their training. As Goku doesn't really have that much options to help him, but Vegeta would then tell Kakarot to train with him at once, and his, even his little brother can join. As they all need to get as strong as possible, they can use the gravity room. So Goku, Raditz, and Vegeta would all train together. Vegeta's already used to very high gravity, training in well over 100 to 200 times gravity, no problem. Goku and Raditz would very quickly catch up, as they would all continue to train and grow more powerful than before. Now Raditz would actually get the biggest boost here, getting way more powerful, as two weeks would pass. Once when the Z Fighters heard about Frieza coming, they would continue training, Piccolo would take Gohan and even train him as well, so Gohan made sure his senses were sharp for what's coming. So then the day would come, they can sense Frieza arriving on planet Earth, with a few of his spaceships with thousands upon thousands of soldiers, as his men would then fly right off to go on the search for the Dragon Balls, but they would very quickly be stopped by the Earthlings. With Krillin, Tien, Yamcha, and Chaozu and the others, they would then all attack the of course, the warriors, and destroy them all, knocking them out back and forth. As we know, Krillin and all the other ones are way more powerful, having power levels of, you can argue, around 15,000 each, so they're knocking out the soldiers, not much of a problem. Now, Vegeta here, as we said before, Vegeta had a power level of around 36,000, Raditz originally had a power level of around 200, 225,000, with Vegeta training with Raditz and Goku for a week straight, pretty much, getting Zenkai's as Goku would have Sensu Beans with him from the help of Korin. As, remember, they didn't go up to Namek, so Korin would still have a few Sensu Beans left, a couple dozen, so they can give out to the other Earthlings and other people. Vegeta would get roughly five times stronger, having a power level of 180. If Raditz got around five times stronger, he would have a power level of 1.25 million. And, of course, with Son Goku, if he got five times stronger too, he had a power level of around 12 and a half million. With this being said, the fight would then continue on, as both of them were easily defeating everybody else in their way. The Ginyu Force was there as well, as Vegeta would actually handle it. Now, with Captain Ginyu, once when Vegeta would handle Raccoon, Birder, Jace, he would pretty much knock out everybody. Dodoria, Zarbon, and Kui, and a pool, they would have no chance. Captain Ginyu sees how powerful Vegeta is, and he would do the change now technique, right on Vegeta. Changing bodies, Vegeta would then try and attack Raditz, who would easily defeat him, with Captain Ginyu not being used to the body as well. With this, Vegeta was defeated. Captain Ginyu would try to use the change now on Raditz, but Vegeta would then jump in the way and swap his body so he has his original body back, and he would then completely obliterate Captain Ginyu. Vegeta was a little bit damaged, but it was not that severe. As the fight would continue on, this would infuriate Frieza as he would finally reveal himself amongst the three Saiyans. Even Frieza in his first form, he would begin his assault as Vegeta was even able to hold his own a little bit against Frieza. This would cause Frieza to go into his second form. Goku was surprised to see how powerful he's gotten, but he's not as strong as him or Raditz yet. Now Raditz would actually have a pretty good fight with Frieza here. With the likes of Raditz, of course, trading blows back and forth with Frieza, only growing more powerful as the fight is going on, Frieza was completely shocked and completely furious how Raditz is able to basically hold his own against him, even in his second form. Raditz would skip over, of course, and tell Frieza that he has more up his sleeve than before. As once when Frieza goes into his third form, he would start to overpower Raditz until Raditz would then burst into Kaioken times two. This with an overpowered third form Frieza, as third form Frieza was completely shocked, he would then go into his final form. Goku then notices that this is different. He's way more powerful than his original self. As most of Frieza's men is dead, the entire battle area is a landslide of just death, fire, and destruction. Everything else is completely obliterated, 
and it's pretty much a war zone and a wasteland. Frieza was furious, but he will do everything he can to get these Dragon Balls and have his wish. He does not care how long it will take for him to get it, but he will. Raditz will then fly in to attack Frieza, but Frieza here is a lot more powerful than his original self. He would overpower Raditz. Raditz here would then scream and go into Kaioken times 10, which would actually give him a big buff in power, and he would actually land a few hits on Frieza, but Frieza was not phased by it, as he was holding back. Raditz would be on the losing end, until Frieza was getting ready to kill him before Goku would grab his wrist and throw him to the side. Frieza would then grab his wrist, as that hurt a little bit, and he would see that it was Son Goku. Frieza doesn't know who this fool is, or what he is. He seems to have a strange resemblance to that Saiyan all those years ago. He remembers it's Bardock. He must be an offspring of some kind, he must be, as there's, of course, no way that this monkey is going to even touch him, of course. With Goku having a power level of 12.5 million, fighting Frieza is a little bit more different as he's far more powerful than his original self, being able to attack Frieza full force. But, of course, Frieza's holding back. Going at half of his power, he was hard to overpower Goku, which would surprise Raditz as he's never seen his brother on the losing end. Goku would then use the Kaioken technique, doing Kaioken times 5. That would then bump him up to 62 million, and he would start to fight back against Frieza, of course, even going up to Kaioken times 20 in the moment to fight him, having a power level of 250 million. But Goku knows of the warnings of Kaioken that King Kai taught him, as Goku wants to enjoy the fight, as Goku's holding back a lot of his actual power. As we know, Goku has a form that he can access to that gives him a white aura, but it's God Essence. As Frieza was completely furious the fact that Goku was easily overpowering him, they were trading blows back and forth, as Son Goku here was only growing stronger. They would begin trading blows back and forth more and more, as Frieza would then kick Goku through a few trees, and Son Goku would then get right back up and tell Frieza that it's over, Frieza, you cannot defeat what I am. Son Goku would then begin charging up his power, and the transformation was similar to that of Super Saiyan Blue, but imagine it as his base form, and it just has the white aura instead of blue, and the blue hair dye Super Saiyan hair. His power level with God Essence is 62.5 a billion. This would make him far stronger than Majin Buu and far stronger than even a fusion potentially. This version of Goku is bustedly strong, as he would prove so by easily grabbing Frieza and telling him that there is no saving you, but I am going to give you one opportunity to leave and never ever come back. Frieza was absolutely terrified until another ship would then land. As Goku then dropped Frieza, who was defeated and had little to no energy left, it was none other than his father, King Cold. This version of King Cold would then see the battlefield and see, well, I guess my son was defeated that easily. He would offer Goku to join him Goku would very quickly say no, as King Cold loved seeing his power. It was beautiful to him. He could have been the most, one of the most powerful beings in the universe. He could have ruled like a god, but he made his choice. As King Cold's men would have ran around, of course, fighting the other Z fighters, the issue here is that the Z fighters have a much more harder time because they're tired fighting all those Frieza soldiers. Now, we don't know the official power levels for King Cold, but we know that King Cold has a power level of similar to that of Frieza, having a power level of around 100 million. Remember that he's in a second form, and the likes of Frieza only got way more stronger because of this. Frieza, of course, at his full strength, roughly got around, if he can also throw in the fact of his full power state as well, you can go in 100%, that Frieza from his second form to his final form got around 80 times stronger. So, this would mean that King Cold, having a power level of, you can say, 100 million, times 80 would have a power level of roughly around 8 billion. But even if he did, that would be nothing to the power level of 62 million billion by Son Goku. 
King Cold would then showcase his full power in his final form to Son Goku as the fight would then begin. With the likes of Son Goku easily defeating King Cold, not having too much of a problem against him. King Cold was running out of options. He knows that his elder son has this as he helped him. King Cold would then go into his fifth form. This is the true form of their, of their species and their full power, as this version of this form has greatly increased his power, giving him a power level of roughly around 60 billion. The fight between Goku and King Cold would shake the entire universe as their battle was immense. Goku for the first time was actually having a true challenge and Goku was loving it. He was so happy that he could fight somebody at full strength without holding back. Though it was tough for King Cold, as King Cold can't sense energy either way, and even if he did, Son Goku cannot be sensed as he has got key. So Goku would then teleport behind King Cold, grabbing his armored tail and throwing him through the planet Earth. King Cold would then jump back up and charge up two supernovas in his hand, throwing them right at Goku, as Goku would then grab them both and destroy them with his fingers. King Cold would be elated, as he has somebody that he can actually go full strength against. But the battle is clear, that he has no chance against him, he's the perfect being. He was designed to be the greatest being in the universe. Son Goku, by this point, can finally use tricks that he's never used before on King Cold. King Cold would then fly right in and deliver a powerful attack with his tail, as Goku would then put his two hands together, something would then form in his hands as Son Goku would then pull his hands apart and form a weapon made out of white energy. This weapon was a very similar weapon to basically a stick. It was very similar to his original magic power pull that he had, and the same as before, but he's really good with this weapon. As the power pull would then extend, it was white in power, but it was basically powered by God. Goku would then spin the power pull around and fly right in and hit King Cold right across the face, splitting a part of his face open, making him bleed from his mouth. King Cold would be shocked that he can summon weapons like that from his hands? How is that possible? King Cold would then fly right in, and he would then cut right through the power pole, hitting Goku right in the face, and then King Cold would then grab his neck with his tail, crushing his throat. Goku here would then begin struggling, as then his hand would begin glowing, he would form a keyblade and slice a part of his tail off, making King Cold scream in agony as he would jump back and then kick Goku right to the ground. As King Cold would then dare him, how dare he cut his tail off, he would then begin charging up a massive, massive solar system destroying attack right at Goku, telling him to catch this. He would then throw it right at Goku, as Goku would then grab the attack, screaming in pain and struggle, very similar to when he caught the supernova against Cooler. Goku would begin pushing this back as his muscles would then bulge, as Goku was using the true power of his god energy. As of course, Goku would then fire a massive beam of energy right through the attack, and it would hit King Cold full force, sending King Cold right into outer space. Goku was pretty exhausted from the battle as King Cold would then land as he was very injured but still alive. Goku was in his base form as there wasn't much more that he can do to help fight. As King Cold still had plenty of power to fight Goku left. Goku here is running out of options. He does have one idea. He would then look to his brother Raditz as he was weak enough and he would tell him, Raditz, Let's do the thing together. Raditz knows what he's talking about, but the problem is, is Raditz is not powerful enough the fuse will be too weak. But who is one person that's not that injured? Vegeta. During this time, the Z Fighters would actually be fighting with Raditz helping King Cold, as Frieza by this point has scurried off and escaped the planet, as Frieza was too terrified. As of course, King Cold was distracted by using the Solar Flare with the help of Krillin and Tien, Goku would then explain to Vegeta, as both of them were near equal power now, having power level a couple hundred thousand, they were pretty much even. And he would tell Vegeta about the fusion dance. He learned it very shortly right after he left from the Metamorians in the afterlife. 
They're not perfect at it, but they don't have a choice. Vegeta would not do some embarrassing dance. He would rather die. Goku would tell him, so you would let your darling Bulma and your unborn child die? Vegeta would then grit his teeth and tell him, how do you know about that? Goku said that I can sense it. Vegeta would then not have a choice as they're somewhere private. They would begin to do the fusion dance. As now, they did it perfectly the first time, and they would fuse into Gogeta. We don't know the official multiplier for Gogeta here, but if Goku and Vegeta both had a power level similar to a couple hundred thousand, let's say 300,000, put together, of course, you can say that they got a hundred times stronger with fusion. That would basically put the two at around 600,000 times 100 would be 60 million. Not to mention the fact that Goku can use God Essence to help. Now, of course, this is just lowballing it. Now, with Gogeta here, he would then fight King Cold. As King Cold had a power level of around 40 to 30 million, he was severely injured. He would then be easily defeated by Gogeta, not having much of a chance. He would land some blows, but Gogeta was too powerful. As he would then charge up a Gallic Kamehameha wave, hitting King Cold full force, which would completely obliterate him. This same beam attack would then fly right out into outer space and almost hit Frieza's ship as he was flying past, as Frieza would then be completely destroyed. Frieza would barely be able to survive in the vacuum of space, as we know he can. He would then drift off into space, but he was alive. Now, with King Cold dead, they would defuse as peace was finally restored to planet Earth. They would use the Dragon Balls to fix any issues or anybody that was killed. They also remember planet Namek, and King Kai would tell them about it as they would push back everybody that was killed on planet Namek. The planet Namek was forever in their debt, as planet Namek was saved as well. Frieza was drifting out into space, far out, until... Riza would then land on an isolated planet. Of course, it was a civilized planet, more like a wastelandish planet. He would then land severely injured, as these people would then surround him and grab him, helping him out. After the defeat of King Cold and Frieza, who was sent off into space badly wounded, we will all cut to Frieza, who landed on a mysterious planet. Frieza was gravely injured, but he looked around confused, as he didn't know where he was. These beings then grabbed Frieza, pulling him away. As then, the mighty Frieza would then wake up in a cell. He was confused, but he fell off. As he can't sense his energy that well, he can't feel his power. He was still in his final form, of course, as Frieza would then have something on his chest that seems to be limiting his power. He was scared and got confused, as he tried summoning an energy blast, but it wouldn't work. Then, the door would open, having a man, a strange alien-looking creature, wearing a very royal cloak, but then walk towards him and state what an honor it is to have such a powerful entity as Frieza on his planet. He explains that he rules a planet that they love an Olympic-style fight arena. They capture aliens and prisoners, and they put them up against the hordes of monstrosities for them to fight to survive. Lord Frieza was absolutely furious as he tried to attack the man, but then the chip on his chest would then spark of electricity and keep Frieza pinned down as the man would state that this is fused to his body. The only way that it can be taken off is through him and his private command. This chip also limits Frieza's unforsaken power, so he can never escape. If he does, he will die. Frieza was absolutely furious. There was nothing that he could do, as in the doors would close, as Frieza would then turn around and see a few other beings who were there. One of them was actually a cyborg of some kind. It was scrap metal put together of a cyborg with weapons. One of them appears to be a version of a Yardrat, and even one of them was a large Namekian. The Namekian knew who Frieza was, and none of them liked Frieza at all. Frieza stayed away from the entire group, as once when the arena door opened, Frieza and the rest would then walk out, seeing a massive open arena. It still smells the burning copper smell of blood, as there 
Millions of different species of aliens would be screaming and chanting. As then the announcer would then state that there will be fun day today. On the one corner, they have a new fighter just for them. As then, coming out of the ground were these large alien parasite-like creatures. As then the warriors would then grab their weapons and continue to fight for the entertainment. While Frieza did not do any of that, Frieza would then walk off on his own, and he would try to go to the main door and open it, but it wouldn't work. Frieza would then look around and try and see if he could find a way out of here, as he will not be a slave and took to fight. He would rather die than do that. They would then beg Frieza for his help, as Frieza knows that without this chip there's nothing he can do, so the only way is for him to help out, sadly, as he wanted to vomit. Frieza would only help himself, as these creatures would then head right towards him, Frieza still had a lot of power left within him, as he was able to easily defeat these creatures. This would surprise a lot of people, as the weeks would pass, Frieza would continue battling these monsters. Frieza would slowly start to accumulate to this group, very slowly, as he starts to rely on them, as they saved him a few times, as he helped them. They all know who Frieza is, and they all shared their opinion about him respectfully. Frieza didn't really care. But over the time has passed of months into a year of being stuck in that hellhole, fighting for the rest of his life, Frieza would start to soften up around those people, as he has nothing else. He would rather be dead, but he must continue fighting, as the one thing that is driving him is revenge against that Saiyan who did this to him and killed his father, but he doesn't care much about that. But it truly destroyed him. Frieza would then tell everybody about the Saiyans and how evil they were. They would actually agree that the Saiyans were not the best people, and they would form an alliance. As now, Frieza would actually start to change over the time, as the king was growing more and more angry as people started choosing him over the king. The king would then challenge Frieza to a true fight in which Frieza would then completely destroy him and defeat him in battle. Once removing the chip, Frieza here is still weakened, he's not at his full strength, but his power level is around 300 to 400 million, which again is a little bit more powerful considering the fact that he's actually fighting every single day and technically training in a sense. Frieza here is a bit different, as now he sees things a little bit differently. He knows what it feels like to be under someone's boot, he kind of knows what it feels like to be treated like this, and he doesn't want to be treated like that ever again. With the fact that he lost his entire empire, especially since his father is gone too, and Lord knows about his brother, but that's another story. Frieza would actually be the ruler of this planet. Finally happy that he was finally a ruler again, but he actually starts to be a bit different. He's not as evil as he was. The thought of revenge starts to fade away a little bit, as Frieza will worry about that later, as he wants to build up his army again. Back on planet Earth, most of the events would happen the same. The only events here is that Frieza and King Cold would never show up as Mecha Frieza, and future Trunks would never appear, though Trunks would still be born as Vegeta still hooked up with Bulma the same as before. Raditz and Launch would also have a child around the same time as well, and of course Goku and Chi Chi and Gohan are happily together, and the rest of the Earthlings and Z Fighters are just training and enjoying life. This means that Trunks never warned them about the androids that are coming. So this means that in the original timeline, nothing changed. So there's no Dr. Jiro appearing or Android 21. It's the original Android 17 and 18 and Cell who will appear shortly. Once when the two androids will appear, this version of Goku never dies of the heart virus because he never got it. And even if he did, his divine energy will heal him and protect him anyway. The androids here are much more stronger than their original selves, multiple times more powerful, but against the likes of Son Goku, who by then was still training, with the help of Raditz, and they even know the fusion dance against the likes of Cell, they would have been able to defeat them pretty easily, bringing peace back to Earth. Seven years would pass, as Son Gohan here has now gone to Orange Star High, and here he becomes the Golden Warrior, as by this point, Especially since the likes of Vegeta would learn of Super Saiyan around the Android Saga as well, but didn't touch up on that. Raditz would pick up on it, and Goku would help Gohan learn it. Now, would Goku be able to go Super Saiyan? 
I think yes. As we know, mixing Super Saiyan with Gaki, but that's a different story. Goku has not mastered his god energy to siphon it into what would be Super Saiyan God or Blue or Rosé. And even beings like Goku Black, who has divine energy inside of a mortal body, of course is Rosé being a true divine form, this version of Goku Black, as we know, he can go Super Saiyan in the manga. He went Super Saiyan 1 and 2. So I believe that this version of Goku can do the same thing as well, albeit it is much more powerful versions of that Super Saiyan transformation. Once when the Supreme Kai would appear, everybody would meet up at the tournament the same as before. Vegeta is not as vengeful as he is because he has plenty of time to fight Kakarot, and he already knows that he cannot defeat him, and he accepted him as being number one, as he believes that he is the true legendary Super Saiyan. Well, even though Vegeta uses that motivation, but we all know. Supreme Kai would then tell them about Bobby and about Majin Buu. Gohan, I believe, would still have his energy taken so they can find him. This energy, either way, with Gohan being much more powerful than his original self because Goku never died. Since Goku never died, Goten still being born, Gohan would have two people who would want to train with him, so Gohan would be a lot more powerful. He would be probably a little bit more powerful than his original self when he fought Cell, but it's roughly the same. Gohan here would have his energy taken as he would go Super Saiyan, and we could even see a cool transformation scene seeing Super Saiyan 2 in anger as Gohan would transform into this for the first time. Now, I feel like Vegeta would actually know about Super Saiyan 2, and he'd be surprised that Gohan knows about it. But Vegeta's keeping that secret so he can fight Kakarot one day. They would all arrive to Bobby's ship, and this is where some changes are going to occur. Bobby here would try to take over Raditz and Vegeta, as they're both tainted hearts. Raditz, I believe, would be able to fight this off, the same with Vegeta, as they allowed themselves to be taken over. Or can they? You see, Vegeta is one of the most strongest mental beings of all time. Raditz is never shown to be that mentally tough, if you understand what we mean. So if Raditz was still tainted heart and he would still be taken over, I believe that Raditz would have still been taken over by Bobbity. Thus bringing the Goku versus Raditz fight brother versus brother, as Vegeta would help Gohan fight Deborah alongside. Now they would try to get to Bobbity with the help of Spring Kai alongside them, as Goku did not want to fight his brother, but Raditz wanted to. As Raditz would then transform into a Super Saiyan, even going Super Saiyan 2, because of the power that Bobby has given him, he feels stronger than ever. He didn't need to be soft anymore, he didn't need to be around Kakarot. As Goku would do everything he can to help his brother, he would be holding back tremendously as they would be fighting. As Raditz would severely injure Goku in their fight, this back and forth, but fighting definitely, would give plenty of power for Majin Buu to be born. This would make Raditz then realize what happened, as then, afterwards, since Majin Buu was born, Vegeta and Gohan were a little bit tired after fighting Deborah, but they would be fighting Majin Buu. Majin Buu would have easily defeated Gohan and would have taken down Vegeta very quickly. Now, before Vegeta was killed, Raditz would then fly in and kick Majin Buu away and fight him alongside with Goku, helping them up. Now, Majin Buu would have overpowered this version of Raditz, knocking him back again, as, of course, Goku would then have to step in, and he would use his God Essence power, buffing his power up, as by this point, he is way beyond the likes of Buu. He is far beyond Vegito, as this version of Goku, by this point, is near the levels of his Super Saiyan God power when he fought Beerus. This version of Goku fighting Majin Buu would have easily outclassed him, but Goku does not kill him as he still senses good within him, and he would kill Bobby, letting Boo live freely. As Boo would then befriend Mr. Satan and build his own house with B, they would then enjoy life together. Now since Bobby was completely destroyed, and with probably with the help of Spring Kai, Raditz's Majin power was then taken away. As Raditz felt shameful in the fact that he was able to be taken over, Goku understands that it was not by his choice, he was forced into it. And the Supreme Kai understands where he came from as well. After these events though, once when Majin Buu was defeated, as we know, Majin Buu would see Mr. Satan and the dog get shot as he would be furious, Evil Buu was born, who would then eat Fat Buu, and he would then transform into Super Buu. Goku would sense this at this point and go to fight Super Buu the same as before. As Super Buu would be easily overpowered in their fight, 
Goku knows that he cannot hold back against Majin Buu when he has to destroy him. As Goku would then get absorbed by Majin Buu, as Goku never experienced the absorption ability. But Goku's God Essence power saved him, very similar to Vegito's shield. As Majin Buu was enchanting, saying that he won and he was ready for ultimate power, for some reason it was not being absorbed yet. As Goku was going through his body, he would then find Majin Buu sitting there in a little cocoon. He knows that he's good, he can sense it. As he would then fight Super Buu inside of his own body, Super Buu would beg him to not pull it off, as Goku would. Thus, when they escape, Fat Buu was free. Super Buu would then transform into Good Buu. As, no, it's a joke. Super Buu would then transform into the most evil, vile creature other than Janimba, not good at all, he would transform into Kid Buu. This version of Kid Buu would waste no time in holding up a planet destroying attack to blow up the planet. Goku would then knock it away, as by this point Vegeta and the others would appear, far by this point, and Goku would then fight Kid Buu. He notices that Kid Buu is a lot more energetic and more psychotic than the other ones, but with Goku's raw power, he would have easily overpowered Kid Buu, completely obliterating him with the Kamehameha wave, thus saving Fat Buu, who actually was more pure and innocent now than ever before, thus fixing most of the timeline. Until Lord Frieza was then preparing to leave towards Earth, and far off as well, far off. A purple cat was sleeping, named Lord Beerus, sensing all that raw god power has woken him up. Far off on a distant planet, laid one of the most terrifying beings in all of Dragon Ball, known as Lord Beerus. Lord Beerus is Universe 7's god of destruction, and the most powerful fighter in Universe 7. Lord Beerus has been awoken from his slumber because of the raw power that he felt from a Saiyan named Son Goku, or as Kakarot. Lord Beerus would have awakened up as usual, and he would have asked Whis about if Frieza has handled the Saiyans. Of course, Whis would have said that Frieza is alive, ruling his own planet somewhere, as Kakarot, as say Son Goku, was the one to actually defeat him. And of course, going around as well, he also defeated his father as well. Whis would explain that this Saiyan is different, as there's brother Raditz, and there's Vegeta, and this other halflings, but this one is different, my lord, as this Saiyan possesses god energy. For some reason, he was born with this. This would perk his interest very quickly, as some Goku would still be on Earth and not at King Kai's world. Bulma would still be having her 38th birthday party, and it would be a gathering at her house, as Son Goku would be there on time and hanging out enjoying time with them. Life was enjoyable, until Lord Beerus would then make himself known as he would teleport there and show himself in front of everybody. Vegeta was terrified as he recognizes Lord Beerus and how powerful he actually is. Raditz doesn't really know who this guy is and he thinks he's weird. Beerus would explain who he is and why he's here. He's here to fight the Super Saiyan God known as Goku. Goku would point at himself and say, Me? Why do you want to fight me? Lord Beerus would explain that he had a prophecy of a true rival that can give him a true fight. As Lord Beerus was checking Goku out, he was sensing his energy. Lord Beerus notices that he does have God Essence, but he doesn't know how to control it, it seems, as it's leaking out of his body. So Goku here would then go towards Lord Beerus and state that he would love to fight him, as it might be a lot of fun. Lord Beerus was super satisfied, as they would then fly up into the air and continue their fight. This time around, Son Goku is way more powerful than his Super Saiyan 3 self, he's actually stronger than himself when he was a Super Saiyan God, and he would give Beerus a pretty good fight. Now Son Goku was ecstatic to fight somebody like Lord Beerus, as he's never met somebody as powerful as him before. And as they're fighting, Son Goku is only learning his power over time and getting stronger and stronger. Son Goku does have a trick that he does want to try out on Lord Beerus, but he wants to save it until a little bit later. The fight would continue heating up as it would begin trading blows back and forth as it was shaking the entire universe. Goku at this point, 
he already knows how to control that raw power that he has, so the universe would not be in the absolute psychoticness of it completely exploding. Their blows would shake across the universe as everything can be felt as some Goku can finally go all out against Lord Beerus and Lord Beerus was having fun. This Saiyan, just himself, was incredibly powerful. As Vegeta and the others would then watch below, Son Goku was starting to get on the losing end as Beerus would start to overpower this Leon Saiyan. Son Goku would then begin powering up as he has something that he wants to truly try, as he didn't really have anybody to try it on yet, he doesn't know if it's going to work. As Son Goku would then go into Super Saiyan, he would begin calming his mind, channeling his god power through the Super Saiyan, as then it started turning pink and the aura started changing from a pinkish purple hue, as then, Goku has now transformed into a Super Saiyan God, or Super Saiyan Rose as we know, as it appears that for divine beings, if a Saiyan has true divine power and he transforms, he becomes a Super Saiyan Rose, not a Super Saiyan Blue. Son Goku then look at his hands and think, oh, that's pink, that's weird, but okay as Son Goku has never felt more powerful before. On top of the fact of how strong he is in base form, transforming into Super Saiyan Rose, this version of Son Goku is nearing the levels of Tournament of Power Goku when he was in Super Saiyan Blue. This version of Goku is so powerful that he would give Lord Beerus an incredible fight as Lord Beerus was being pushed back, surprised at the power at first, until Lord Beerus would begin powering up, showing off his Hakai power. Son Goku would be able to deflect the Hakai abilities as he was similar strength to Beerus. Lord Beerus was still holding back as he would continue trading blows back and forth, one seemingly not getting the upper hand on the other one, until Lord Beerus would then finally have enough, as he would then power up even more, throwing off his purple aura, and he would then charge up a massive Hakai ball and throw it right at Son Goku. This ball would completely obliterate Earth and everybody else on it from existence. As Son Goku was holding the ball back, he would then scream in pain as he was trying to fight the Hakai ball back as Beerus was only making it bigger. Goku would then scream as he would then use every ounce of power that he has left to completely destroy the Hakai ball and he was back in base form completely exhausted. Lord Beerus was truly impressed by this Saiyan's power, beyond impressed. He's the strongest being that he has ever fought. Goku was happy to hear that, as Beerus was satisfied and he's really hungry. So they would go back down and they would go eat at Bulma's party, and Beerus would eat tons of incredible Earth food alongside with Whis. Whis has a lot of interest in the Saiyan, as he is a true divine being. He would be an absolute perfect candidate for a god of destruction. But Goku would refuse the god of destruction role, as that's not what he kind of wants to do. That's not his thing, but he does appreciate it. And Lord Beerus states, hey, I'm not being God Destruction for millions of years yet. Now, after the food was gone, Lord Beerus would actually offer Goku to come to his planet and train under Whis. While it is true that he does know how to transform into his God power, there is still much more that he can learn how to access it even better, and can actually give him a real fight. Goku would then agree upon it, as after talking to his wife Chi Chi, getting a couple head bonks from her, he would then agree. But there is one issue. Vegeta ain't letting him go unless he wants to come along. And Raditz as well. Raditz is not letting his brother get that far ahead. Goku would then ask Whis about it and Whis would allow it. Because if it makes Goku go, that's fine. Now, of course, Goku being so much further ahead than Raditz and Vegeta, even on being God, he has different training than Goku and Raditz does. As Raditz and Vegeta they have to learn to access God Key from scratch. So their training is much more different as Goku's off on the side, training privately with Whis, as Whis wants to do Beerus' wishes and make him as strong as possible. Goku would continue to get more stronger, way more powerful as well, alongside his potential, as he would continue fighting Whis. Whis would then explain that you have a very calm spirit and a very calm mind. Maybe one day you can maybe use Ultra Instinct. Which is what Goku was asking him about, how Whis can dodge every single attack. Maybe he's just fast? Goku would say, oh, I would love to learn something like that, that'd be cool. But Whis would explain that sadly, mortals cannot learn this technique. Or even, maybe even divine beings. Since it's really only meant for angels, not even gods of destruction have a good time learning that move either. 
Go to Crusades, well, maybe one day. As time would then pass, two to three years would pass, seeing as before, Frieza would not go to Earth to attack Goku. By this point, Frieza is kind of like the ruler of his own planet. Frieza has chosen to not take revenge. As Frieza is satisfied where he is, and he's satisfied with what he has, he doesn't want to go get himself killed over revenge. He just doesn't care no more. He'll just let the past die, and he'll live with the future. No one else knows about it anyway. As his army was bigger than ever, Lord Frieza would only help out his planet and basically get more income and more money for that planet. He's not really a tyrant anymore, as Frieza is still menacing and evil, but he's not as pure psych psychotic as he was before. But Frieza would then let it go, as he does not want to fight Son Goku, he does not care about it no more, they are erased from his memory, as Frieza is a pretty good king actually, and he would continue to live out his days there. Now, as of course, going back to Lord Beerus, Choppa would still appear after about a year or so after this event, so this would give them plenty more time to train and get stronger. By this point, Vegeta and Raditz are pretty much equal in terms of power, and by this point they have both learned to use Super Saiyan Blue the same as before. They both have similar power to what they would have in the Universe 6 vs. 7 arc, you can maybe argue a little bit stronger because they are fighting Goku every now and again. So you can roughly say they're a little bit stronger as well. Son Goku here is much more powerful, but we'll delve into that later. Champa would actually challenge Beerus, of course, to have his best warriors fight Beerus' best warriors. Lord Beerus was very confident, so he agreed earnestly, telling him that he's going to lose. As now, of course... The Universe 6 versus Universe 7 tournament would then happen. A lot of the fights would go down the same, but Raditz would actually take over Goku's place as Beerus is saving him for last. Goku's kind of like the Manaka of the show, as just in case if everybody else is defeated, he has his trump card which is Goku. No matter what, he's gonna win. Goku was kind of let down by it, but Beerus says if you don't do what he says, you're gonna destroy him and destroy Earth. So Goku listens. As Raditz would take over Goku's place, he would of course fight Frost, and he would actually be poisoned, the same as before, but he would be able to get back in the ring, as of course Frost was called out for being a cheater. And of course with Vegeta fighting Kaba, the same as before, and Mageta, Vegeta would then go up to fight Hit, and he would lose, as this same Vegeta, though he is stronger, it might give Hit a bit more of a tough fight. Hit still had his unique abilities that Vegeta's never seen before, and Vegeta had a bad time when he bursted in and out of Super Saiyan Blue. Which, if you do this in the canon Dragon Ball Super, this would only get you used one third of the strength, as transforming in and out is not a good idea. This is not Super Saiyan. So Vegeta would still lose, and Raditz would go fight Hit. Raditz has saw how Hit fought, and he saw his moves, as Goku would even tell him. Raditz would put up a much better fight against Hit, but with Hit's adaptation ability and the fact of his pure progress power, he would defeat Raditz after a very, very tough fight giving Raditz an incredible fight. I feel like here as well, Raditz would then give out his trump card and take over a Goku moment and even use Kaioken as well, which would actually surprise Goku that he could actually do that. But Raditz here wants to catch up with his brother, so this would give Raditz time to shine, but it was too much for his body, and he would be able to even the odds with Hit like how Goku did, but he would have to give up and he would be knocked out of the ring. Beerus was very confident, as Hit was completely exhausted almost, he would then slap Goku right on in, as Goku would then land and begin his fight with Hit. Goku in his base form easily defeated Hit, as on top of the fact that Hit was exhausted, Goku saw two of his fights, seeing Hit's full abilities. Goku was a bit let down, as he did promise Hit that he does want to fight him at his best, which Hit would then smirk and then kind of walk away. Choppa was furious until Zeno appeared, as Goku would then shake Zeno's hand, and was shocking everybody else, Goku would then tell him, saying, hey, we should do something like this again. Now, of course, a few years later, this is where the Goku Black Arc does not happen. The reason why the Goku Black Arc does not happen is because if Goku even goes to see Zamasu to begin with, Zamasu would see that Goku is not a mortal, he's a god. So he would actually never have the anger of mortals to begin with. So that's how the whole silly event even started, because Zamasu saw how Goku was, blah blah blah, he went to the future, trunks, body, all that stuff. 
So that would never happen. So Trunks' life is peaceful in the, in the other side of the timeline, and there's not even an issue on the other side anyway. As, theoretically, they never really alter the timeline anyway. And even if you go through the original timeline from this what-if timeline, Trunks is fine. So Dragon Ball Super Trunks would be enjoying life after the Android Instant Cell Incident and Majin Buu Incident. He's happy, enjoying life. Now, as for Goku, Goku would have defeated Zamasu pretty easily. Zamasu would be fine. And this is when Zamasu would then be trained more on under Gawasu and became a full Kai to where all that silly nonsense about morals would then disappear within him as he became a pure Kai. After the events of the Goku Black arc, we are then going to cut into the Tournament of Power. But we will get into that on the next one. Our story last ended with us discussing why the Goku Black arc would never happen. But once we start getting into the Tournament of Power, a lot of the scenes would pretty much be the exact same with, of course, Goku Zeno, with the Grand Priest, stating the rules and more. But this time around, the team will be a little bit more different. Once when Goku will get his team together, he will select a more powerful team than ever before. This team consists of Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and you have Raditz, Piccolo, Master Roshi, Krillin, and you can throw in Majin Buu, but sadly there's no Majin Buu here. And Goku would then travel to a distant planet far away. He would then learn that Frieza was actually still alive and arrive on this planet. This planet, instantly seeing an invader, would have their weapons drawn out, but would be allowed passage through. It was none other than Frieza. Goku would then walk in, seeing a royal palace, as Lord Frieza would stand there, having some battle stars across his body, but he would smirk, seeing Son Goku standing before him once again. Frieza would have a cloak with a hood covering his face, as he would stand up and walk towards him. Goku knows that this is Frieza. Frieza would say that this is quite the surprise, as he would never thought that the Saiyan that defeated him and his family would be here, right in front of him again. Frieza would then tell his men to stand down, as Goku offers him to come join the Tournament of Power. If they do win, they'll be able to use the Super Dragon Balls to get a wish, and if they don't, and they lose, their entire universe will be destroyed. Frieza would decline at first, but Goku would persuade him, telling him that, well, if you don't join Frieza, if we lose, you'll lose everything that you have here, your entire planet and more. Frieza would then turn and smirk at Goku, as then he would disappear, flying towards Goku, punching him right through the castle wall. Goku would then collect himself, getting back up, as Frieza's gotten a lot more powerful. This version of Frieza has continued his training, not as intensely with vengeance as he has, but as we know with Frieza's insane potential, he can do slight training and get much more powerful than his original self. This version of Frieza, with his training, is far more powerful than the Frieza we last saw in the What If. With Goku now on the stand front, he was shocked at how powerful Frieza actually has become, as Frieza would tell him that he's been waiting to have a rematch with him, and he's been waiting for this moment. As Frieza's body would then grow in size, he would then showcase his fifth form. This was similar to what his father had as Frieza saw it, and he knows that he can access this. Frieza would then continue his fight on Goku as Goku would then transform into a Super Saiyan, continuing their fight. Goku was far more powerful than Frieza, beyond so, but he was having a lot of fun fighting Frieza again. Frieza would then showcase his true power. A power truly for a true emperor. As Frieza would then transform into Golden Frieza, he decided to go with this color since, well, you know, Super Saiyan and all the golden colors, and also because it's Golden Frieza. Frieza would then begin his assault on Goku, Goku being Super Saiyan 2, as he could have defeated Frieza in Super Saiyan 2, but he wanted to prove a point to Frieza. Goku would then transform into Super Saiyan Rose, shocking Frieza, but Frieza was not surprised. Frieza would actually yield, as he knows that he cannot defeat Kakarot and Goku, sensing his powers far beyond his. Frieza would then yield, and he will agree to join Goku on this journey, and he would actually shake his hand, which was completely out of character for Frieza, but Frieza's changed over the lot of the years. He's not as menacing and evil as he originally is. He's still not a good person. But he actually has a little bit of respect for him. Frieza here would then travel everybody else who they were not happy to see Frieza, not even Beerus himself. He was planning on destroying him, but... Beerus says that if Frieza does his job correctly, and he doesn't kind of ruin everything, then he'll let him survive. Frieza would then think upon that and thank him. 
They would all then arrive at the Tournament of Power, where they would be interacting. They would see Universe 7, seeing two new Saiyans, Khalifa and Kale as well. Of course, seeing Kaba again, as Khalifa really wanted to fight this Son Goku guy. But Goku can sense somebody else. He can sense someone incredibly powerful. Now, we did skip over the, of course, the before rounds, as when Goku fought Topo in the little exhibition match. Goku would have easily defeated Topo in their match with not much of an issue, and before he could have knocked out Topo, the Grand Prix would have stopped it anyway. So that's how the really silly the fight would have gone. Gohan being stronger, or if Raditz fought him, he would have defeated him. It wouldn't matter anyway. So Topo would have still lost, and Topo knows how strong Goku is. And he would tell Jiren that, but he's not too concerned because he knows how powerful Jiren actually is. The turn of power would then begin as all the Z fighters would then go off on their own as Gohan tries to keep the Earthlings together so they can fight as a team. Now, of course, with Vegeta going off on his own, and of course Raditz as well, Raditz would actually stick by Goku a little bit as though fight brother, you know, side to side as brothers, knocking people out left and right. This is when Khalifa and Kale would then find Goku and begin their fight. Now, Khalifa would then start fighting Goku, as Goku would actually be in base form, not in Super Saiyan 2 or Super Saiyan 1, as he would easily dodge her attacks and strikes, as he was just testing her out. Khalifa, with being pushed, would then go Super Saiyan 2, which would impress Goku. Goku would then continue to overpower her, which would cause Kale to be upset. Once when Kale was upset, she would then transform into her Berserker form and fly towards Goku to attack him. But Raditz was there, as Raditz would then burst into Super Saiyan God, and actually kick Kale right into the ground. This would actually stop Jiren from showing off his true power, or will it? As Kale would then grab Raditz by the face and then toss him across the ring, she would then charge right towards Goku, but before Goku could attack, Jiren would then appear, firing his power blast, sending her into the air and exploding. Goku would be surprised at Jiren's unmatched speed. And then later on in the fight, Belmod would know how dangerous Goku is. He is basically a god, and the only reason why Goku was allowed to join, because he's not exactly mortal, is because of the fact that Zeno really likes Goku, and you can't tell Zeno no. Zeno wants to see Goku fight, and the Grand Prix said so too. Belmont would then tell Jiren that you need to take care of Son Goku first, as he is the biggest threat here. Jiren would then agree, and Jiren would then charge right towards Goku, as base form Goku would actually push Jiren back a little bit. Turning Super Saiyan, he would start to fight Jiren one-on-one. -on -one. But of course, Jiren was far from using his true power, as Goku would then burst in Super Saiyan 2, knocking Jiren back. Jiren would then start to overpower Goku, showing off his red fiery aura, and Jiren would state that this warrior is truly powerful, but he knows that this is not his peak power. He wants to see the Saiyan's true strength. Goku would then smirk, as he's so happy that he found somebody that's that powerful. As Goku would then transform into a Super Saiyan Rose, as everybody watched in awe, as Son Goku would begin his fight with Jiren, this would be a very similar fight to MUI Goku versus Jiren, as they're seemingly equal. As Jiren was being pushed, Belmont was in utter shock, seeing how his beloved Jiren was being overpowered like this. This is no way. As Goku was on the fighting end with Jiren, Jiren's outfit would be torn as he was badly injured alongside with Goku as they were fighting almost to the death. But Goku was not willing to give up, so he would start to overpower Jiren, starting to defeat him as Jiren was on the losing end. Jiren being backed into a corner would then remember his past trauma and awaken his true hidden power. This is called Limit Breaker. As Jiren now has a special red aura, he would then look towards Son Goku and easily overpower the Saiyan, dominating him across the fight, beating him profusely. Son Goku would then land on the floor, turning back into base form, their battle itself knocked a lot of people off of the ring. Only a few of the strongest actually stayed on. As now, Goku was just laying there exhausted. As then Frieza, Raditz, and Vegeta all flew in. And of course, Vegeta and Raditz being in Super Saiyan Blue, with Frieza in his golden form, and Gohan even jumping in too. In Super Saiyan 2, they would all jump in to fight Jiren. But Jiren was too powerful in this state and being rage fueled he would then overpower all of them, knocking every single one of them out slowly.
While Goku was trying to recover, Hit would even fly in and try and attack Jiren as well, telling Universe 6 that he might be weakened, as then Kale and Khalifa would then do the fusion dance, or the per se, Batara fusion, and they would fuse into Kefla. After fusing into Kefla, they would then begin their assault on Jiren, but Jiren was not playing around. He would overpower Hit very quickly and grab Kefla and then toss them out of the ring. Now it was just only a few fighters left, Goku, Vegeta, and Frieza. The two are most likely team teaming up. As Frieza was completely exhausted in his golden form, he was running out of power. Vegeta in Super Saiyan Blue was exhausted as well. They don't know what else to do, but to give Kakarot the power to stand back up as Goku had no energy left at all. They would then jump and sacrifice themselves fighting Jiren as they were both knocked off. Frieza would then have his own little speech about Goku telling him to do the right thing. Vegeta would have his own speech as well crying and they would give Goku the rest of their energy as they would fall off of into the void. Their energy would then power up Goku to his base form as Goku would then sit there and stand up slowly. His head was down as Jiren would then smirk as he would then charge his red aura up as he would tell the Saiyan that it's all over. He would then punch forward but Goku would then dodge the attack. As Son Goku would then turn around, looking at Jiren, this version of Goku would actually skip Ultra Instinct, going into Mastered Ultra Instinct a lot faster because he's a true divine being. Whis was shocked to see how he was able to access his power, same with the gods, and how he's able to basically master both the striking and the dodging ability as well. Goku would then fly in and easily overpower Jiren. Even with Jiren's new limit breaking power, it was not enough to defeat this version of Goku. With a full power Kamehameha wave, Goku would then knock him out of the ring, defeating Jiren. With the final wish being said, with Goku being the final being there, Goku would wish all the universes to be brought back that were erased, which makes Zeno happy, and peace was finally restored back to the universes. Goku promises to fight Jiren again and to kind of test out this new Ultra Instinct power, as Whis would be very proud of him, everybody would then go home and have a nice feast and enjoy their victory. And that is it for this What If You Guys. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let's get to 20,000 subscribers. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all later.